it comes to creativity, so often when we're looking at other people's work, when we're looking at all the other podcasts or all the other creators, we can doubt our own ideas because it's not yet out in the world. But that's the point. The point is that it's your idea and you have to figure out how you want to execute it. And so if we're only looking at, hey, how can I play it safe? And this is what's always worked. And this is what I'm going to do when we decide, hey, I'm going to do this because I it's something new and it's different and it's scary, but it's really calling me. Only then can you really show up in a way that nobody else will. Hey, what's up, Masters? Welcome to another episode of Path to Mastery. And today we are with Mrs. Kate Woolman. What's up, Kate? What's up, David? I'm so excited we finally made this happen. I know. Well, we know each other from the Breakfast with Champions Club. I funny, ironically, I just have my Breakfast with Champions uh cup here. And yeah, we've been talking about this for a while. And it's good that we finally were able to, to connect. So thanks for uh, thanks for being on the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. I'm excited. And congrats on the podcast. You have done such a great job in getting some wonderful guests and you you have a great voice. You are definitely meant to be a podcaster and some really interesting conversations. So I'm excited for today. Appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah, I, I you know, my goal is always to get better, Kate, and just continue getting better at listening, asking questions. I've done two, I think this we have, this will be about 292, episode 292. So, you know, we've been doing something for 290 weeks, Kate, straight. Wow. And uh, yeah, it's it's been awesome. We've been fortunate to have some really cool guests. And just like I said, I just want to get better. I'm, I, I don't know about you, but I know you're, you know, we're going to talk about leadership today and creativity. And uh, and I'm like my worst fan. Like, I, I feel oh. like I am so hard on myself or, or is, is that does that stunt creativity, Kate? Oh, uh, it yes, David. I feel like we are all our worst fans, right? Like the people that are out in the world doing incredible things. They have podcasts, they're writing books, they're doing all of these great things. They are such cheerleaders for other people. They're creating content for other people to kind of lift them up and inspire them. And yet they're in the background saying thinking, my podcast isn't good enough, my video is not good enough. I shouldn't put this out. We can be our own worst critic. It's horrible. Mm. Yeah, well, because it, it didn't, you know, as I was saying that, it kind of clicked that it probably would affect my creativity to to be that hard on myself. Yeah. Because I look at it as it's pushing me to be better and better and better. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I think when we are able when we give ourselves when we're when we're talking badly about ourselves or when we're doubting our work or when we're doubting our ideas obviously that's stifling our creativity because if we would give in to those ideas and thoughts then we would have we would be courageous enough to create what we feel like maybe it's not meant for us, right? So like whether it's a podcast episode or, I mean, we've talked about this too. You've reached out to some really incredible guests and had them on the show, right? Like if you were not, I mean, that takes some courage to ask really influential people to be on the show and figure out what show that's going to look like, what questions are you going to ask them? Like all of that is creativity. And if we're thinking, oh, that's a stupid question or, oh, this is not the right direction to go, then we're not letting ourselves explore what's meant mm. for us, explore what only we can create. And I think when it comes to creativity, so often when we're looking at other people's work, when we're looking at all the other podcasts or all the other creators, we can doubt our own ideas because it's not yet out in the world. But that's the point. The point is that it's your idea and you have to figure out how you want to execute it. And so if we're only looking at, hey, how can I play it safe? And this is what's always worked. And this is what I'm going to do when we decide, hey, I'm going to do this because I it's something new and it's different and it's scary, but it's really calling me. Only then can you really show up in a way that nobody else will. Mm. Yeah, so, so true. So true. And, you know, one of the things you know, something else that's come to my mind too. We, we've got, we got a bunch of people on clubhouse. So by the way, we'd love if someone else wants to come up, help us mod moderate the room in clubhouse, because 
we want to invite some people up and, and, you know, in probably about 15 minutes, we're going to open it up uh, for questions. We're going to open it up to qu for questions for Kate. Ooh, fun. Who we're fortunate to have here. So thank you, Bonnie, for coming up. Bonnie, you can help us facilitate. Hey, David, I was going to tell you, it's a little hard to hear Kate. She's muted kind of in the background. Oh, Sounds like she's thank you in for a that. distance. All right. Is this, is this better now? Kate, can you speak? Is this better? Yeah, I don't. Oh, yeah. Much, much better. All right. Awesome. Oh, good. good. Perfect. Thank you for letting us know that, Bonnie. That's that's super important. See? Okay. Um, so, Kate, appreciate you being here. And we're talking today about uh, creativity and, and leadership. Um, so, a little bit about you. You help professionals explore creativity and do more of what they love in business and life. Um, Kate is a business coach and CEO of Floyd Consulting, an organization dedicated to helping people and organizations become the best version of themselves through dynamic coaching and training experiences. Let's talk about the best version of, of, of yourself. Um, like how, like, what does that even look like? Like, <laughs> see, the weird thing about like, for me, it's like, I always think there's something, something else. Right? Like, I'm like, okay, like, I don't feel like I'll ever become the best version of myself because there's always something else. Am I like an anomaly to think that or is, is, is that normal? No, that's completely normal because we are all, I mean, this is life, right? Life is about progress. Life is about getting better every day. Life is about exploring who you are and Every challenge that we have in our lives that we overcome, we become a better version of ourselves, right? Like we become the person that is more courageous, that is more bold, that can take on these challenges that we couldn't in the past. And so wherever you are, however old you are, whatever it is that you're doing, anything, we're always becoming a better version. So we, so Matthew Kelly coined the phrase, the best version of yourself, but really Life is about becoming a better version of yourself every day. And if we can do one, this is why I love your podcast, right? It's about mastery. There's, there's never, we're never going to master life. It's just this constant journey. And as long as we're pushing forward and the goal is to be the best version of ourselves, hey, we're getting better. Every day we're, gonna get, we're getting better. We're learning new things. We're learning more about ourselves. Um, and that's really what it is uh, to to finally step into to that best version, um, even though, you know, technically, I guess you never quite make there. Like right? no one on no uh, one on this planet. I'm thinking of like Rick, Richard Branson. Right. For some reason, he he popped up I'm like even Richard Branson. He's an amazing entrepreneur. He's done incredible things in the world. He's still not the best version. Like get better every day. Yeah, it's true. Or even like Elon Musk or all these guys. They're like, OK, what's next? Correct. It's always like what's next. And it's it's cool because it's inspiring to yeah. know that, you know, if they can do something like that, why not me? The only thing that's in my way is is up here. So yeah. let me ask you this. What are so what are what are your are is there is there like a, a, a process, a strategy, a couple like what do people do? How does somebody start becoming the best version of themselves daily, like you talked about? Well, so the, a lot of the work that we do at Floyd is around helping people discover their dreams. And that is, you know, so often today, especially during challenging times, we forget to dream, right? Like we, there's, we, when we're young and we're kids, we have all of these dreams in our lives and it's just easy and it's fun. And then we get older and we stop dreaming. And so we have to take some time, and I talk about this a lot on Clubhouse, to write down your 100 dreams. Like, what are 100 dreams that you have for your life? And it's we have dreams in all different areas of our lives, our physical, emotional, mental, spiritual, creative, psychological, legacy. And when we have that list of 100 dreams, we're working towards a bigger, better future. We're working towards a more engaged life. You know, David, it's so sad because today 70% of the workforce is disengaged, right? Like that's the standard, like 70% of people are disengaged in their work. Now, if they're disengaged in their work. So let's describe what's, what do you mean disengaged? Like, what does that tell us what disengaged means? So, so disengaged and there's, there's a spectrum of engagement, right? There's people on one end of the spectrum, like that is like, 
totally engaged. They are a hundred percent. Like they, they're the ones they show up, they're committed, they're reading personal development. They're like David Hill, right? Like they're trying to become the best version of themselves and they're going after it. And they, and they're we excited love to be there. They're excited to be there. They're engaged when they show up in meetings. They ask questions. They help their team members. They are really part of the mission. They, they ha they're they invested mm. in the mission. So those people are like 100% engaged, right? And now you have this spectrum. So you go down the spectrum. There's people that are 80% engaged and 45% engaged and 20% engaged and 10%. And then all the way at the other end of the spectrum, you have those people, those Q&S people. They quit and they stay. They quit, but they like, don't tell anyone about it. Right. Like we've all worked for people that are like, Hey, like they've worked there for like 15 years, but they checked out like 10 years ago. Hmm. Those people are disengaged. So when, when I say 70% of the workforce is disengaged, that's basically they're on all different levels of disengagement. Right. But, but overall, so many of those people, they show up to get a paycheck and they do the bare minimum. Mm. And for those people, if they're disengaged in their work, then how likely is it that they're actually engaged in their life? They're not. These are people that are kind of working for the weekends. They're not engaged in their own life. And the, the difference between people who are disengaged and those that are engaged is they believe that people who are engaged, they believe that the future can be bigger than their past. And they believe they can influence that bigger future. And so people who are engaged, they believe in their dreams. They're working towards something. When we have a dream, when we have something that we are uh, extremely excited about, whatever that is, whether it's a vacation, a new, a new job, a, a new client, uh, writing a book, whatever those things are, when, when, we, when we're faced with challenges, we know we have to keep going. Look, you you teach people sales, right? Like you have to be in a headspace to do sales. Like you're picking up the phone and you're getting a lot of no's. No, no, no. You have to have the dream of making the sale, of closing the business. Yeah. You have that dream so that you can handle all of those no's. If you don't have the dream on the other end of those no's, you can't you're not going to show up and do those calls. Yeah. It's true. So when and when you say dream, you you know, some of us say would would equate that to purpose, right? Or 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 vision, or is that is that true? Or, or passion? Um, like, because if if the, if you're not passionate about what you're doing, like even you know, like I teach, I work with people in sales and all all different sales from every part of from the phone to the closing process. But they have to be passionate about what they do. They have to believe in what they do. They have to be confident in what they do. Otherwise, people pick up on that, right? So. So is that what you mean when you say dreams? And then my other question with dreams, you said a hundred. When you said a hundred, I was just like, man, that seems like too many <laughs> to write down. So let's talk about that. So dreams are different than vision and passion, right? Like vision is who am I becoming, right? Like that's the the best version of, of David Hill. Who is that? What does he look like? What is he doing? Where is he spent? Where is he spending his time? What does his days look like? All of that. Dreams are literally, who do you want to meet? Places you want to go, material things, right? Like some people feel like, oh no, I shouldn't have dreams of, yeah, you have materialistic dreams. Maybe you want to drive a Tesla. Maybe you want to have a really beautiful home because you live in a smaller one and you're growing your family. Those are all dreams. And so writing down the list, you know, we always get pushback from our clients with the hundred, with the, the number hundred. So here's what I say. <laughs> it's a lot. It is. But here's the thing. The, it's not even about getting to the hundred. The hundred is that you have the goal of getting to a hundred. So it pushes you to start thinking about the dreams that you have. It pushes you to put down a dream that maybe it will never happen. David, maybe someone has a dream of they want to own, uh, they want to, they want to own a yacht or, or a private jet. It doesn't matter whether or not you have, you ever get to the private, just put it on the list. I tell mm. my clients, put it on the list. Like, what's the harm in putting it on the list? Like, you're putting energy into the world for the things that you want. And so when I talk about those 12 areas, think about it. There's 12 areas of dreams, David. And if you put between six to eight dreams under each of those areas, you have 100. Now, some of those, some of them are easier, right? Like some people, they have a, they can come up with tons of dreams for their physical, their financial, their professional 
But when it comes to their legacy, character, psychological, their creative dreams, there's a lot of people that they 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 aren't allowing themselves to dreams in those area in those areas because they're not as familiar or they've given up their creative pursuits. Mm -hmm. I work with so many CEOs and leaders who honestly, as we're going through the coaching process with them, you know, what shows up, they want to go skiing. They miss photography. They used to cook every night and they never do anymore. And it's like when they bring those things back into their lives, taking a dance class, doing yoga, whatever that creativity means for you, they start to see it in their business and in their families. I, I love it. Um, the other, you know, something that as I'm listening and, you know, you were sharing, I, I, you know, when you talked about um, disengagement in my, in my mind, I think of, of, um, of complacency as well. Like, does that also play like into the, in, in comfort zone, not just complacency, but comfort, do, do people do, do a lot of people just get in that comfort zone? Like, well, it's, it's okay. Things are fine. I don't want to ruffle any feathers. Uh, I'm just going to show up every day, go up, oh, you know, the daily grind, right? I have a friend that says I, I'm Joe lunch pail. Like that drives me nuts. I, <laughs> Joe lunch pail. I don't want to be Joe lunch pail. I, but do you, I don't know if you ever heard that expression, but I haven't. It, yeah. It's just the guy that shows up every day with his lunch pail and, you know, goes to the office and does his thing or whatever job they're doing. It's like, I just feel like I want more than that. So is there a complacency yeah. there? Yeah, I think there's a difference between contentment and complacency and people, to me, that when they're, there are so many people, this is one of the things as a coach that's really challenging is that a lot of, and, and I have the best coaches in the world. They are so incredible. My team is amazing. And one of the things that I always have to remind them is, you can't care more about your client's dreams than they do. Mm. And that is the biggest challenge for a coach because when you see someone that you, I mean, even a family member, right? If you see someone that you love that isn't living up to, to not to expectations, but living up to what's That's meant for them, but their potential. And so, yeah, I do. I do see that you we can get stagnant, right? I mean, think about it. We we see it in relationships all the time. How many people are in relationships that they really don't want to be in, but they're thinking, I don't want to go on the dating apps. I, it's a nightmare out there. Like they're not happy, but they don't want to leave. They're not happy in their jobs, but they don't want to go find a new one. This is why so much happens for people when they, you know, think about all the stories that we hear from people that they got fired from a job and finally they pursued their passion or finally they yeah. pursued the work they really wanted to do. It's like, oh, it took or or unfortunately, it takes something like getting ill or getting into an accident or something happening for you to finally realize like, oh, wow, we don't have all the time in the world. We have to pursue what it is that we really are passionate about. And so when you are focused on dreaming and, and keeping your dreams front and center, then you don't allow yourself that complacency because you recognize there's only a certain amount of time that we're here. Mm, yeah. You know, it, it what you just said reminds me of the, you know, I, I was for a couple of years, I was a, a team leader at uh, Keller Williams. I ran three offices and, and we recruited a, a over a 200 agents into those. But to recruit 200 agents, we probably met with five or 600 over those two year period. And um, it was the amount of people that would sit down with me and tell me, all the challenges they had, the frustrations they had with where they were, things that weren't working and, and just they didn't they weren't happy. And then I'd say, OK, great. So let's let's take action. Let's move. Let's. Oh, my God. I'm not going to do that. I, and it, it puzzled me like it, I was really just I struggled with it. It didn't make sense to me. And I really, really struggled with it in the beginning until I just realized, hey, I think that's just some people that's just how they're wired. You know, I think because, and you tell me if this is true, but I think some, some people feel the pain, the pain of moving or doing something different is going to be greater than like, I'm trying to say, how am I saying it the right way? Like, like, like 
the pain of not doing, we, we need to figure out how to make the pain of not doing something greater than the pain that we're in right now. Right. Am I, am I saying that right? Or I'm, I'm kind of <laughs> on pain and pleasure. I mean, but, yeah, it, I see where you're going with this. Oh, but yeah, I'm trying to go with it. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, I think that's what's the thing. Like the people, even though they were in pain, even though they weren't happy, they were complacent. They just weren't. But then they looked at, oh my God, well, if I do that, I have to switch this and I have to do all these things and I have to change business cards and I have to call my clients. And it's just like, okay, well, I'll just stay here because it's more work. And, and I think what you said about the relationship is what reminded me of, of that. Yeah, it's it's because it's hard. Like David, it's hard, right? Like though it's it's challenging to We lost you on Clubhouse, by the way. Oh, it's challenging to um to put in the work, right? I mean to I mean, we're you and I both have a love of personal development. We 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 like the same kind of authors. And every time you're you're sharing a book, I'm like, yeah, that's on my shelf, David. Like, you know, we we're very like minded in that way. And I have to remind myself that. And and look, we're in Breakfast of Champions a lot. We're we're surrounded by really incredible people and leaders and people that are trying to get better. And so we have to remember that most people are not doing that. Most people are not surrounding themselves with incredible people that uplift them. They're not reading great books every day. They're not listening to podcasts like yours and getting information from incredible people in the world. Like most people are not doing that. And so it's easy for them. It's like that Jim Rohn quote, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. I think about that quote all the time because how true is that, right? Like you're when we see people that are surrounded by those that are not up encouraging them, that are not uplifting them. I mean, even people in that are not in good relationships, their friends are not in the best relationships. So they're encouraging them like, oh yeah, you just have to say, this is what it is. This is just life. And mm -hmm. so if you believe that life cannot be a certain way, if you believe that this is as good as it gets, if you believe that there's no better job, there's no better relationship, there's no way for you to explore your creativity. I mean, we hear it all the time. We can make excuses all day for why we're not doing the podcast, the videos, the, the work that we say we want to do. I mean, the book that I wrote is very much about doing what you love, even if it's not your full-time job. Right. Like you don't have mm. to be a full time content creator to start creating podcasts or videos that you want to share ideas you want to share that have nothing to do with your business. You can do it just for the fun of it. Like there's no reason why you don't have to. And so when people we can all make it, we can either find excuses or we can find reasons to do what we love. We can find reasons that it would make sense for us to pursue the dreams that we have in our lives. So I think that's the biggest thing is that we often don't recognize when we're making excuses because David, we're really good at making excuses, right? Like we're, I don't have time. Oh, it'll never work. It won't happen. You know, I, I'm not good enough. Like all of the things that we say that go round and round in our mind. Are those excuses or are they limiting beliefs? Are you a, a do you believe in limiting beliefs? Totally. Yeah. And I think that those things are both, but yes, I mean, I, they're all, those are all limiting, like, like the idea of not, of not being enough, the idea of, of belief, those are definitely limiting beliefs. I don't have time. I'm too old. I have, you know, I've, I'm not yep. smart enough. Uh, what, there's so many things that people say to themselves too. Yeah. I mean, this is what we, this is what we do, right? Like we are so good. This is why, what do they say? Uh, it's like that positive to negative ratio. We have to have like for every five negative things or for every, yeah, we need five positive. We need five positive com comments to just um, disregard one negative. I like it's, it's why it's we, so. Yeah, it's like it's it's why when uh, when you look at comments on a video or if some or if an author writes a book and they look at all the reviews, they could have a hundred five star. I love this book. But what's the the one bad review yeah. is the one that they focus on. hundred percent. Right? It's like and this is what we do. We we stop ourselves when our friends say you're embarrassing yourself or I didn't like that video or why. Why do you think that you can do that or. 
like those are the things. And when somebody says those things to you, you know what? You take them out of your life because yeah. that is not meant for you because you're going to find someone else who believes that you can make it. And not only do they believe in you, but they've probably done some things for themselves. And so that's what I find really inspiring is it's that it's that um, isn't it Abraham Lincoln who said or no, who who said it? Um, if you uh, if you think whether you think you can or you think you can't. You're right. Oh, was that Henry Ford? Henry Ford. Henry Ford. Why did I say Abraham Lincoln? Um, <laughs> he's smart. He said and there's other a book things. right there on my bookshelf with Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, so, but I think that, you know, right? Like whether you think you can or you think you can, you're right. And that mm. is so true. Like when, if we really went about life thinking that, then, I mean, there's just way too much evidence out there of people that have made a huge impact that have created incredible businesses that are extremely creative, that are putting things out into the world that they appreciate and they love. There's there's just way too much evidence to prove that you can do all of these things. Yeah, no, you're, you're so right, but you have to look for the evidence and that's that's the key. Correct. And, and you brought me back to when I first started teaching, when I first started training, I I do a class and there would be a hundred people in the class and you know, I'd, I'd get, you know, 95, you know, good pieces in the beginning. I, I don't know. I wasn't that great. So maybe the numbers were skewed a little bit. So I did have to look at the, you know, the negative and say, okay, what could I do better? But then as I did more and more, you know, I, you're right. There'd be one or two. And instead of just looking at it and saying, okay, how do I get better? I would, I would be like, I would be just like obsessing about like, why I forget about all the great things that were said and only focus on the couple <laughs> negative ones. And I think that a lot of people have that have a habit of doing that. So I know. Stop. Yeah. We need to stop it. Yeah, stop it. Stop it. <laughs> Did you ever watch, you watch that that uh, old uh, show with uh, where uh, it's it was a skit on um, God? What was the uh, oh God? I can't. Uh, it's now I'm miss forgetting things. It was an old. Oh, and, and the, the guy, the lady came in for coaching and, uh, and he, he sat to sat her down and, and she started sharing and he says, um, stop it. Are you, have you seen that? No, I, what is I, that? I in, oh God, you got to look it up. Just look it up on Google. I'm actually going to do it now, by the way, do we have any, do we have any questions? Um, so people in clubhouse, I'd love to open it up for some questions and, um, and yeah, who has a question? Feel free for Kate. Okay, you got a little bit more time, right? Do you have still? Yeah. Uh, okay, cool. So if anybody has a, yeah, here it is. The Bob Newhart. Uh, oh my gosh. And, and it's, uh, it's awesome. And that's his, his coaching is just stop it. And then at the end, she's like, I don't like this coaching. And it's awesome. It's such a, a great skit. You gotta, you gotta check it out. It's uh Bob Newhart and it's called stop it. You can just Google it. And that's it's, so it's funny. Great. I'll have to look at it. Um, so speaking of, uh, we got some great people on Clubhouse. We got Dr. Sean in the house. We got Bonnie, who's been on the phone the whole time. Typical realtor. Uh, we got William. <laughs> uh, uh, we got Damien that came up. So does anybody have a question for Kate? Give me a mic flash if you do. There you go. Damien, what's up, man? Hello, everybody. Good to hear you all this morning. Uh, Kate, I got a question for you. Are you ready? I am. Damien, it's so good to hear your voice. I was, I'm not going to lie. I was about to just say stop it and walk off the stage, but I thought that would. Have... <laughs> um, okay. So, so here, here's a question for you. Um, my, most of my career is predicated on the fact that, um, I help people think and see differently. I want to know like what's one of your super oh wait david now i can't hear him oh yeah now you hear me? oh yeah now i can what what did you say what's one oh, of your i want to know one of your superpowers in business what what is that's a good question i may have to steal that from my podcast <laughs> what, is something that is, what is something that's uniquely kate that is that is your uh your superpower Thanks. Oh, I love that question. Okay. So I am going to share because one of, I have a friend 
I have a fr- actually this is a f- this is a fun story. I have a friend who he loves asking this question. He is an incredible entrepreneur and I remember we went to lunch, one of the first times we ever went to lunch, and I knew that he loved this question. And so we went to lunch and I should have figured that he was going to ask me this question. And so he he did. We were at lunch and he said, so what's your superpower? And I said, oh, I knew you were going to ask me that and I should have come prepared. And I was thinking and he goes, do you want me to tell you what your superpower is? And I said, uh, yes, please. I'd rather just somebody else tell me. And he said, um, ma- he said, optimism massive optimism. He said, you are uh, very optimistic and that is very rare in leadership and very important in business. And I thought, oh, that's really cool. I was going to say that I think my superpower is uh, being a connector because I really love to not only connect people, but I also love to kind of connect ideas and see and create different partnerships that others might not see. But what's really fun about the optimism thing is I started a newsletter called Massive Optimism because after he said Massive Optimism, I said, that is a great name. I went right back to my office. I bought the domain name and then Clubhouse came about. And so I started a club and then I started this newsletter. So all of that came out of the question, what's your superpower and getting it from someone else. So Damien, thank you so much for that question. It's a great question. And I think that everybody should think about it for themselves and also ask someone else that they look up to, maybe a mentor or an old boss or a colleague and ask them to share what they think your superpower is and see what shows up. That's cool. I like too how you, you know, it's not just about what you think it is, but what other people see you as, which I think is really, really powerful. I love that. So you almost be just like, hey, if I asked your best friend what was your superpower, what would they say? Yeah, you know? I, it's it it kind of it, it makes the question easier to answer because I think so many of us we get caught in our head, right? Like we all think we are so many things, mm-hmm. or we don't really give ourselves credit for certain things. And the the whole idea of your superpower is that it's something you are so naturally good at that you forget that it's a superpower. Like you forget that other people look at you and think, oh my gosh, that I love that about her or him because it's just who you are. Like that's why it's your superpower. So we we often forget. We don't, we don't really, I think, lean into what our superpower is because we take it for granted. Yeah, I agree with that 100%. Does anybody else on the Clubhouse stage have a question for Kate? I'd actually like to piggyback on that. Dr. Sean. I would- Having known Kate for a while, first off, yeah, Damien, haven't seen you in a minute, so it's so it's good to see you. Um, but Kate, I think after having known you for a while and working with you a little bit at Breakfast with Champion, I think the massive optimism is true. But I also I also think it's infectious optimism. I think that you infect people with optimism and that you you don't allow the darkness in when you're talking. And I appreciate that because I can go dark every once in a while when I'm talking and say things that maybe don't make people feel optimistic. But I feel like you are always that beacon of optimism and that your optimism is infectious. So I just wanted to throw that in there. It's not really a question. And I hope it wasn't running your podcast again like I did yesterday, David. But <laughs> you I just <laughs> destroyed my whole podcast. I mean, seriously, you know how much editing we have to do now? I, I know I'm, I'm, I'm the I'm the absolute I'm worst. I get it, I get it. But uh, I just wanted to throw that in there, Doctor Sean. You're as the much man. As I used to. You pop Aww, in here, Doctor Sean. <laughs> you're so awesome, Doctor Sean. Thank you so much. I meant to text you the other day because I I was like so glad to hear him again on on Clubhouse. I've missed his voice. Yeah, right. It's nice to have it, him yeah, back. I, I only I really only took three weeks off, and one of the as I was at the NBA finals, I think everybody saw that junk, that drunken tirade on Instagram. And then the second week I didn't feel well. And then I came back the third week and I'm there anymore. So I really yeah. only took two or three weeks off, but I know it felt like forever. Well, welcome it back. It did feel brother. like forever. It's, it's awesome to have you back. And yeah, we're talking about clubhouse, by the way. So if you're listening to this and you're not on clubhouse, check out the clubhouse app and you can find all of us on clubhouse. You Kate Volman, uh, I have Dr. Sean is on clubhouse and we all hang out in the Breakfast with Champions. That's the that's the club. You really want to check out that club. That's where we all met. I, I started there in March of – Kate, I don't know how long you've been in Breakfast. I mean, I remember the first time I went to Breakfast with Champions. It was maybe the second time. I don't know if you were there for that 
it was a sales meeting and it was, there was Grant Cardone was in there. Uh, Glenn, Glenn is, uh, you know, the founder of EXP Realty. Um, gosh, I can't even think of his last name. How, do, how can I not remember that, his last name? That was the, that was and, actually and, the first Saturday they had it. Oh, was it? it was, yeah. That, Jay that was, Abraham. And Jay, Jay Abraham. Um, and David and Brian Benstock had yeah. paid Jay Abraham to be there. It was great. Yeah, I remember it was that, was my, that was my first week too. Yeah, and I'm like, oh my yeah, God, I'm this conversation. Oh, Glenn, yeah, Glenn Sanford. And I'm at EXP, so don't tell. And Glenn's been on my podcast, so yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, good good stuff. Well, um, any final questions for Kate uh, before I, I ask her my final question? And I'm also going to let her know how, let you guys know how you can get in touch with her and, and, and get access to anything that she has going on. Any final questions for Kate before I do that? Okay, awesome. So, Kate, first off, how do people get in touch with you? And tell us what you have going on that people could take advantage of. Uh, people can get in touch with me. I guess the – well, Instagram is kind of – Instagram and LinkedIn are my social media platforms of choice, um, at Kate Volman. And then katevolman.com is where you can find me, um, and I share – um, my podcast over there. I also have some free resources. I have, like I said, I have a newsletter called Massive Optimism that I get out every Sunday morning and I share book recommendations and journaling prompts. And I also have a uh, 77 journaling prompts to inspire action. And that is over on my website as well. So that's a, you can, I'm pretty much all over, <laughs> like all of us, I'm all over the internet. <laughs> and you also do a regular segment on, in the Breakfast of Champions Club. When is, what is your segment? Yeah, What's I your... do a segment every Thursday at 6.30 to 7. And it's always a fun time. And I always encourage people to come up and share some of the dreams they have. And it's always, it's always, it's always positive and fun. So I love it over there. It's awesome. Yeah, it's a super cool space. Um, so I definitely appreciate you doing this. I'm going to ask you a question that um, I haven't asked in a while and uh, see, see what your thoughts are. Well, I got two questions for you. Okay. Uh, number one is um, what what's the question that you always want to be asked, but you're never asked? Oh, David, I ask people this question. <laughs> you know, okay, cool. Well, I'm glad I, I asked um, you the question. Uh, but you know, it's so funny. Since I ask it so much, you would think I would have a good answer to it. <laughs> I forget um, where I heard it. I heard it on somewhere a while back and I just haven't used it. Um, in a while, I love it. It's a what, great question. What question? Mm, gosh, that is, you know, I don't. I don't know. Oh, this is you're stumping me on this question. What question do I wish people asked me? Um, oh my gosh, David. Do you what what is one question you wish people asked you? Oh no, you're gonna not gonna stump me back. I mean, <laughs> that's not right. Um, throw it back at me. Well, you know, I'll think about it. Let me let me think about it. So what what's something because I honestly I hadn't thought about it. And it's funny because I should have expected this. Um, it is a tough question to answer, right? Yeah, I think, you know, I, I guess it, it, we're so used to like our those frequently asked questions, right? Like the questions we do get asked all the time. And I mean, I think for me, it would it would be my childhood. I, I don't get asked a lot about like where where my grit and grittiness and stuff comes from. So mm. but I'm not going to I'm not going to it really does come from my childhood, um, you know, so. But I'm not I'm not going to I'm not going to get into all the details right now because I know we're, we're kind of at the end of the show. But. Uh, we can do that another time, which is super cool, because I want to be on your show as well. So maybe we yeah. can talk about that on your show. Yeah, we got to. Right, so, um, so what do you got? What if, if you knew the question, what what would be the answer, Kate? If I knew the question. Oh, look at you, salesperson. No, that's, um, coaching. that's coaching. You're a professional coach, aren't you? I know. Yes. Um, let's see. I would um, maybe if if there's a question that I don't get asked. um. You know, I, I think so many people uh, ask about the how. I, I think a lot of people are like, you know, how do I get started or how do I do a specific thing? I think a question that would be more interesting uh, would kind of be like, why? Like, why? 
Why mm. is your work important to you? Mm. Love it. Yeah. I'll stick so with why, that, so but now I'm going to think about it. So I'm going to journal about it, David. Why, why is your work, why is what you do with creativity and leadership important to you? Are you asking me now? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> um, it is it is deeply important to me, and I think I've recognized it more over the past couple years, especially as I was writing this book, because I feel so blessed that I have always felt very supported in my work. I've always enjoyed my work. I've always worked with great leaders who have encouraged me to explore my creativity and they've given me a lot of autonomy and I don't take that for granted. I know that not everyone has had that luxury over their career and mm -hmm. I want as many people as possible in the world to wake up and feel fulfilled and feel happy and feel good about the work that they do and feel like they are doing what they are meant to do, that they are exploring their creativity, that they don't allow other people to hold them back. And that at the end of every single day, they feel like they have learned something and that they've grown and that they have in some way become a better version of themselves. Great answer. And um, I love that I made you think and did, did my job today. That's, yeah, you did. That's, uh, <laughs> that's good. Um, Cause you know, here's the thing with podcasting years ago, you know, again, uh, 280 episodes, 290 episodes. We're going on over six years. And I remember going way back. Like I would think in my mind, and this is a creativity thing. Like I would think like I should ask this and then I would not ask it. And then I'd be listening to the podcast down the road and I'd be like, why didn't I ask that freaking question? So uh, then I made a commitment that anytime I thought of asking somebody something, I would just ask it. So I made I that commitment it. to myself. I, I, I love that. I love that you are doing that because as, as a podcaster myself, I feel the same way. I'll sometimes I'll even think, Oh, I still remember what I wanted to ask them as a follow-up and I didn't. And I was so mad at myself because I was still curious for the answer. And so I love that you made that commitment to yourself. It's an important one. And, and again, it goes back to creativity, right? It's like mm. you wanted to ask that question for a reason. And as a podcaster, one of the best, one of the best things you can hear from your guest is, Oh, I've never been asked that before. Yeah. Well, you said you ask everybody. So I'm glad I was able to ask you. <laughs> Um, and by the way, tell us about your book. I mean, you didn't even talk about the book at all. So how do, how do people get, tell us quickly about your book and how to yeah. copy super quick. It's not out yet. Like it's in copy edits right now. I'm in the editing process and phase. And so I am working on like the book, uh, cover and all the design, like all of the things. So it's coming together. And so I will know in the next like month or two when it's actually going to be published and put out into the world. But uh, yeah, keep your keep your eye out. This is a project. This is a creative project of mine, David, that has been like 15 plus years in the making. And I am just so incredibly excited to get this book out. It is so many ideas that I share so much about really just how to live a more creative and fulfilling life and to just put it all into one book. I I'm just I'm elated. So just if, as long as you're stayed connected to me when it when it starts getting um getting published and I have the book, uh, uh, when I have the book cover and everything, it's going to be, I'm going to be obsessed with just getting it out. Cause I'm so excited to share it. <laughs> awesome. Well, congrats. I'm excited to see it when it comes out. So Thank I need you. to make sure you let us know. And I'm sure as soon as you do, everybody in breakfast of champions is going to go get a copy. So Aww, thank a you. Thousand people right out of the gate that are going to want to <laughs> go get it, get it. So um, final question for you. And I, and, and I think you talked about the answer earlier, but I'd love to hear it again is, what does path to mastery mean to you? <clears throat> path to mastery means <clears throat> it's path to mastery is so much of what we've been talking about today. To me, it means getting better every day, becoming a better person every day. And, and this is why I love your show because you're, 
introducing people to topics and conversations that they wouldn't have otherwise with really incredible people and leaders and whatever it is that you want to master in your life, whether it's your health, your fitness, and hopefully you want to master different things at different periods of your life, right? Whether it's your relationship, your work, your creativity, whatever that is. And it's just this constant state of of getting better every single day. That is what that is what mastery is, right? We're never we never become that true true master, but it's just this idea that knowing that you can learn and grow every day is so exciting. It's uplifting and um and yeah, that's what it means to me. I love that. That's an awesome answer. Thank you. I'm going to throw something really crazy out right now too Why? because as I'm listening um and I'm thinking like I I'm reading a book right now and it's it's uh, it's Stephen Kotler's book. It's called The Art of Impossible. Have you ever read that book? Oh, I just got that book. Did you? It's so good. We he's are like be- book buddies. Yeah, I know. It's <laughs> weird because we do that all the time. And he's going to be on my podcast, by the way. I got him booked for some time. No. Yeah, way. reach out to him. If you want, email me. I'll send you the contact so you can oh, get him booked yes. too. Um, but as I'm watching, like I'm watching you, like we're doing this together to show. And I'm trying to look at you, but at the same time, I want to look at the camera. And the camera is about six inches higher. So, you know, when you do podcasts, like you want to look at the camera, but you half the time you're not. You're looking, yeah, you're looking down. Why can they not create a software so that the camera is actually digitally in the center of Zoom? Like the the Zoom meeting, like there's gotta be like I I feel like that is something that should be created. Like, why couldn't that be done? Like, so, so instead of looking like I have to, look, I can just look at you and I'm actually looking at the camera at the same time. There's got to be technology that, uh, that does that. I'm just throwing that out there. I mean, call Elon, make yeah, it I, happen. <laughs> I, I got to make, the, I've got to figure out how to make that happen now that I said that. So yeah, that, I, that is actually, you know, especially in these, in this digital world, look, this isn't going anywhere, right? Like zoom and StreamYard and all of these platforms, this is the way that we're connecting. So that is such a good that is such a good call, not only for these kinds of things, but just like team meetings and stuff. It's so awkward. So like when whoever's speaking, you could have a camera that just jumps around and, and focus like whoever's speaking. That's who the camera like when you speak back, you'd be looking at that person and you'd be I looking love it. at the camera at the same time. See what I just created? Look at you. And now I got to go create it before someone else does. So now you just got to go. go create it. <laughs> All right. Hey, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. I appreciate you. Uh, thank you. It's been fun. And yeah, let's uh, let's connect soon. Oh my gosh. Yes. Thank you so much, David. And again, I love what you're doing with the podcast. Keep getting great guests and having great conversations. You're really, you're really good at this. So I appreciate being on the show. Thank you. Appreciate it.